I was cracking on everybody. So that's when the writers started coming out of the room, getting jokes for me to put in the script. Uh, and, you know, that's how the, the, the writing part kind of came in to play. As far as like Martin, you know, you seeing the show take off in front of your eyes and how did you take that in? And how many seasons were you with that show? I was a PA on the Martin show, production assistant, for those of you who don't know, it's like you're like a gopher, you're like an intern, a paid intern. You do everything nobody else wants to do. Uh, you're not even at the bottom of a totem pole. You are the cement holding that motherfucker up. Um, but I did all these odd jobs. If a, if a writer needed uh, something from the cleaners, we had to go pick that up. If someone left a pot of greens on the stove, we had to go turn it off. We did all of that. And I did all of that. And, and my coworkers too, we dropped off scripts to mm -hmm. you know, HBO and Fox. So they were the production companies for it. We took scripts to actors and actresses or directors uh, all times of day or night. So we did everything and everything. And I did it one season. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, that, which is I still say the greatest job I ever had because it, I learned the business that way. Mm -hmm. you know, I learned LA that way because I was new to LA and driving around with a Thomas guy pre uh, Google Maps and pre uh, Waze and all that shit. You got a big binder and, and you got to find the street and highlight it. And so I learned how to navigate my way through LA by with that job. I learned how to navigate my way through Hollywood with that job. Everything happens for a reason. And I was proud to be a PA, but I was like, I'm doing this shit one season and that's it. And the next season, uh, well, when I was there as a production assistant, uh, it's when I used to crack on everybody. It's natural. We, we, we played the dozens. We do mama jokes. And mm -hmm. I was cracking on everybody. So that's when the writers started coming out of the room getting jokes for me to put in the script. Uh, and, you know, that's how the, the, the writing part kind of came in to play. Mm -hmm. And I ended up doing Def Comedy Jam toward the end of uh, that season. And I remember doing Def Comedy Jam in New York. And I remember calling back to the set after my set that I did on Def Jam and having a really good set. I remember going to a bar next door, it was an Irish bar too, a pub, and I picked up the payphone and called back to the Martin set. And I was like, man, I just did Def Jam. I killed it. <laughs> and it was, that was a good moment. Okay. Yeah, it was a good moment. It was, it was like, wow, well, I went back, finished the season as a PA because I hadn't aired, you know, hadn't aired yet. I, I had a decision to make. Should I go back to the full-time PA job and mm -hmm. get that $400, $500 a week mm -hmm. or take a leap of faith and pursue stand-up, you know, full-time? Yeah. And it was like, thank God, you know, Bob Sumner, and I'm sure with the help of Joe, uh, put me on the Def Comedy Jam tour. Gotcha. And that was God saying, yeah, leave. Right. I got you. Right. Now, as far as... um. So you would go from PA to a writer on Martin, and that was all in one season? No, the writing, um, I was a PA second season. Third season is when I co-wrote an episode for Martin. Mm -hmm. There was a writer's assistant on the show named Matt Diamond, and he was writing a spec script for the show. And he was trying to, guy, is this funny? He's like, man, I'm like, man, that's corny, man, say this. And he'd say, guy, what about this one? I said, man, that's corny, boom. And I said, man, if you sell it, I was joking. Say, if you sell this, you know, I want some money. Just jokingly. He said, well, let's write one together then. Like, cool, because he knew structure and story. He had been a writer assistant on the show for two years. Mm -hmm. And I knew jokes and, and culture. So it was like, yeah, let's do it. So Martin was always good about checking on me. And he always said, you know, guys sit in the writer's room when you have time and learn the writing process, you know. So he was always good at that. And... You know, I had a, um, I did, wrote that episode of Martin, uh, Romantic Weekend, when they got attacked by this rat. And then I had another decision to make, because uh, they actually wanted me to come back as a PA, mm. you know, when I was, you know, assigned that script. And I was like, I'm not about to write and deliver my own damn script. <laughs> right. And that was kind of the, the decision to, like, you know, part ways and yeah. but they called me back they would call me back because I wasn't bitter and mad and stuff I was you know, Martin was a you know was a mentor so uh, they would call me back for certain stuff and if they needed a body double for Martin when he played one of the characters and somebody had to dress we were the kind of the same size mm -hmm. and same ears in a way so 
Uh, I would be his body double when they needed somebody to warm up the audience, audience warm up. When the regular person, J. Anthony Brown or, or Myra J. couldn't do it, I'd come in and do all this warm up. Uh, so it was like I was so involved in that show and still cool with the family, uh, the Lawrence family who, you know, embraced me. And so I always kept, you know, an eye on, you know, what was going on over there.